ladies and gentlemen, I want you to welcome to the stage a man who has a very special place in my heart. He is a funny. When you get him on a roll, let me tell you, you want Del Bigtree on a roll because he is as smart and funny as he is brave. And and I hope he's ready. Where are you? Del Bigtree, come on out here. Del Bigtree! We are so close. Oh my God, it's right there. You know, when I made Vax, which put me in the middle of this entire crazy experience, a lot of people will credit Vax with having ignited this health movement, medical freedom movement. But the truth is, is there have been many movies before about vaccines. There have been a lot of doctors talking about it, but every one of them would interview Dr. Andrew Wakefield, and then they would take him out of the movie because he was too controversial. He had dared to question whether the MMR vaccine was somehow connected to autism. And for that, he needed to be censored permanently forever. But I decided when I got involved with that film that he was in the middle of making, Andy, we're not going to hide you. I'm going to put you in the film. It's going to be directed by you. And I'll oversee it. And we'll do what Hollywood does. And we will rock the world. But here's what I knew. I knew they were going to attack us. I knew they were going to censor us. And that was our entire plan. And now I get to say it. I said, they are going to be so angry about this movie that the pharmaceutical industry and all of its power over our government, over our media, they will be so angry that they will make the greatest mistake of their entire lives and they will attack us on the front papers of every newspaper. And that is the day we will start winning this argument. Up until then, the movement kept hiding from cameras, kept saying, oh, they just chew up our words and make us look like liars, and so we're avoiding the press. I said, no, that stops today. I'm going to get in front of every single camera I can, and I'm going to speak the truth every time I can. And let them try to change my words. Let them try to take out pieces when all I'm going to do is speak truth. And that's all we've done for the last eight years. And what happened? They kicked Vaxxed out of Tribeca Film Festival, which made it one of the biggest media headlines in the world. I didn't know where the censorship would start. I had kind of hoped I would get to win an award before it happened. But in the end, they kicked us out of Tribeca and every headline said, baby killers, oh my God, this movie must be stopped. Nobody should see it. And of course, for an entire year after that moment, every single theater we went to had a line down the block of people asking, what the hell's going on here? Because in America, when you try to censor a story, we get fucking curious. And so Vax swept the world. Millions and millions and millions of people watched it, and a movement began. Actually, a movement was there, but a movement got fueled. And then I met Robert Kennedy Jr. Robert Kennedy Jr. called me one day and said, Donald Trump wants me to go to the NIH and bring all of our issues around vaccines straight to the NIH. He said, we should probably team up on this because you're really loud and you seem to have a lot of good information. Let's put our information together and let's work as a team. And so in early 2017, I was sitting at the NIH across from Tony Fauci. Didn't really even know who the guy was at that point. 
and Bobby was sitting across from Francis Collins, and we laid out all of the issues we saw with the vaccine program, all of the lack of testing. We said, you know, is it true that you have not done a single safety trial on any of the childhood vaccines? So what, 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 what. No, I mean, because honestly, we've looked. We can't find a single double-blind placebo trial of any of the childhood vaccines that are on the market today. Have you ever done that study? And they were kind of quiet, a really long silence. And eventually, Tony Fauci and Francis Collins admitted, we don't do safety trials, placebo trials, because it would be unethical. It would be unethical to test these products that we put into children. It would be unethical to give it a safety test. And so it's never been done. I've been saying it for eight years, and everyone on the camera, it's never been done. And every one of these news agencies will say, oh, that's misinformation. Show me a double-blind placebo trial done prior to licensure on any childhood vaccine. You can't do it. No, instead... Instead, you'll call Paul Offit, who makes money off of vaccines, or Peter Hotez, an expert who makes money off of vaccines, that sold this stupid concept to the world. We'll ask the shills to defend their product. So in the end, at the NIH meeting, they said, okay, it would be unethical to do safety trials. I said, great. Why don't you just do a comparative study then? If that's unethical, let's not put anyone at risk. You're sitting on a database of 10 million people called the VSD, the Vaccine Safety Data Link. Why don't you guys just do, how about this idea? Take all the unvaccinated people, tens of thousands of them, and then compare them to all the vaccinated people and ask some really simple questions. Who has more cancer? Who has more diabetes? Who has more ADD, ADHD? Who has more autism and Tourette's and lupus and leukemia? We are the home of Microsoft. We are the home of Apple. We are now the home of AI technologies. This study of all the databases in the world could be done in one day. Every one of you could have the answers to all of your questions in one day. And the day we asked them to do it, you know what they said? We will never do that study. Why? Do you think it's because they're so sure vaccines are safe? Let me ask you this. Do you really think they haven't done that study? Because a comparative study between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, if they could say to the world, look, the vaccinated are clearly healthier than all the unvaccinated people. Here's the evidence. If they could do that, I'm not on this stage. Robert Kennedy's not about to storm your capital and take over your regulatory agencies. If they could show you one study like that, don't you think they would? And don't you think they've tried a million times to do that study somehow to fix it, to make the data look like vaccinated people are actually healthy? You know they've done it. You know they studied it just the way they studied the COVID vaccine. And just like vaxxed, because I knew they would attack. I knew that this movement was growing so big that they were going to have to show you how powerful they think you are, how powerful they think you are, by shutting you down, by shutting you in your home, by taking away your voice, by taking away your ability to share the people you are listening to. They decided to turn into an authoritarian government to force a vaccine that you watch never get properly safety tested. We knew it was going to happen at the high wire. I knew how they did this game, but then the entire country and the entire world watched the biggest fraud in history happen to them personally. You see, every once in a while, the best thing to do when you're facing a bully is pick a fight. 
pick a fight, get them swinging like lunatics. So they make the biggest mistakes they've ever made in their lives, and that's what they've done. They have turned you and millions and millions of people across this country and across the world into an army of truth seekers and truth tellers. They are so panicked right now. Misinformation, malinformation, misinformation. We're going to stop it. They're admitting it to you because they're so desperate. And they're so pathetic. Sure, if they could steal this election, they would. But I have news for them. There's too many of us now. We are taking this thing back. We are standing up for our founding fathers that said, you never get to censor us. You don't get to tell us what we can talk about. And yes, Gavin Newsom, we do get to make fun of you and Kamala Harris and whoever else we want. You don't have to laugh. You just have to shut up and get out of our way. Yeah. <laughs> Lastly, It's moments like this when we see people coming together from every walk of life that you realize how brilliant this country is. How important ideas are. And how important it is to love your country, to love your children more, as Bobby Kennedy said, than we hate each other. I was honored for the last 18 months to be the communications director for Robert Kennedy Jr. on his campaign. The most amazing experience of my life, and I wish every one of you could have had that experience, to walk with a man with that level of integrity who no matter how much I said, go out and give the booyah speech like I would. He's like, Dell, I don't do that. I'm not going to try and manipulate energy. I'm just going to tell the people the truth. No matter how much he's attacked by the press or even by his own family, nothing but grace and honor and dignity came out of his mouth about everyone around him. And every time he was asked a question far outside of what we thought he was only caring about, vaccines and health, wars in the Middle East, issues around the world, a knowledge and a depth of knowledge and history that we've never seen in a candidate before. And I walked with him on that journey as the media censored every single step he took. Never interviewed him, never talked to him, never gave him an opportunity to talk to this country. And so when the moment came where we realized you're not going to be led in any of the debates, they're not going to let you speak to all the people enough to be able to be elected, we've got to think about what we're doing now. And I just want to say I watched Robert Kennedy with the weight of the world with everyone in his family, and a name like Kennedy, and a Democratic Party, but more importantly, hundreds of thousands of volunteers that had gotten him on the ballot in 50 states, something that had never been accomplished. I want you to think for one moment, everyone that's watching this now, I want you to put yourself in his shoes. My family doesn't want me to do this. The party of my family doesn't want me to do this. And everybody that's worked so hard for a year and a half to put me into a position so that maybe I could win, they don't want me to do this. But I sat in the room as I watched his heart, and you heard him when he said it. I've only got 10 more years. This is the most important moment I've ever been in. And when Donald Trump made that call and said, Bobby, 
I want you to help me clean this system up. I want you to help me make America healthy again. I want you to help me stop them from poisoning our kids anymore. Bobby put it all aside and said, I'm here, I'm present, I'm accounted for. And now America, let's follow them to the promised land. Let's follow them back to our own power. Because in the end, we have to trust somebody. We have to trust the people that have been telling us the truth, the ones that have never censored us, and the ones that stand for freedom. Freedom! 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 Tell everyone you know that's what's happening in 35 days. Delbrick Tree, ladies and gentlemen.